welcome to the MBS show, episode number 231. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Will. Yes. Hi, Norman Sanzo. How are you doing? I'm doing as exactly how you want me to do, Norman Sanzo. Uh, say you're great. <laughs> I am great, Sanzo. So, what are you doing, man? Whatever you want me to do, Norman Sanzo. Uh, hmm, how do I reverse this spell? Uh, you know what, uh, reverse so boso? Ah, oh, sorry, I feel like I was just hit with a bunch of bull crap. <laughs> Uh, today's episode was fun. Oh gosh, mind control! How can that not lead to humor? Indeed, and, terif- and terrifying implications. Oh yeah, and be careful for what you wish for. Oof, they were very literal with that one. Yeah, almost kind of half expected with all the orders she was giving. It's just like, where's the monkey paw just curling <laughs> in one finger? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but still, uh, today's episode was fun. That will be in a future review, somehow. Uh, but this week is all about the news. The pony news of the week, as they say. What do we got this week? Have you heard the store Wheel of Fine? Hmm, no, no, I have not heard of Wheel of Fine. Please, do forget, yes. <laughs> if you're in this fandom, you practically see Wheel of Fine attached to anything. T-shirts, uh, mugs, mugs of T-shirts. Did they say little mugs? I think so, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. As far as I remember, they sell clothes, messenger bags, caps, and so on. Like, uh, way back in the day, Wheel of Fine was kind of the boss in terms of pony merch. And since nobody back then had options to buy, Wheel of Fine was kind of the boss. And I bought like 15 shirts from them. And oof, back then the US dollars were not that big. Huh, but still, but still. Yeah, so we love fun. You want you want pony merchandise? You'll pay for pony merchandise. You'll pay exactly what you want for pony merchandise. And if you don't like it, well, where you gonna go? Well, now there's options, man. Now there's options, but uh, the audience can find that out for himself. But now, um, besides the t-shirts, cap, and messenger bags, we love fun. Are doing vinyls, um, not the record vinyls, but. More of the vinyl figures that Funko are doing, but this is their own original design. Uh, they're the chibis, they call it, like um, chibi vinyls. If you remember way back when in the days, they had like um, their first run of the vinyls. They had Chrysalis, uh, Twilight, and so on. And Trixie. Yep. Oh. yep, yep. And now they're running with Season 2. And Season 2 has Celestia, Luna, Rainbow Dash, Via, Shy, and so on. This was open for pre-order a while back, and somehow things got delayed now. Oof. So people are going to have to wait even longer for their precious figures. Yeah. Which is actually a shame, because, you know, when you hear the words vinyl figurine, and then you hear Fumco, everyone immediately thinks of those Fumco Pop mm-hmm. vinyl things, and uh, that's actually kind of a shame, because the vinyl figurine market used to be extremely diverse back in the early 2000s and 90s. I mean... Sure, it was harder to find certain things, but when when you heard vinyl figurines, I mean, there were multiple different styles. But then Funko basically, you know, cornered the market on the whole thing, and now they basically own probably 80%. They're practically a monopoly on the whole figure. And that's why you see such a... That's why you see such a... Only, like, those Funko Pop designs, is because that's all that's out there. That's all anyone will buy. And mm. that's at least a... That, that's why when something like this comes along, I can understand how it got really popular. Yeah, yeah. And I think with the Funko Pops and the Funko, Funko does a lot of things besides, well, in terms of ponies, they also do the vinyl figures, like Funko vinyls. Those are not bobblehead kind of ponies, but more to your standard um, blind bags kind of, not really blind bag, but brushables kind of style. Mm-hmm. But um, with this one, uh, with the uh, Wheel of Fine vinyls, they're pretty cute, really pretty cool. Apparently, since the delay, um, you're going to be expecting your pre-orders being shipped around March 15, 2017. So, yeah, that's going to be a long wait. But still, yeah. you'll, you'll get your stuff. Yeah, that's another seven months. Ouch. Well, at least you get. At least uh, it'll be worth the wait, hopefully. Oh, true. I mean, I've seen people um, had them, and they're pretty cute, and they're pretty worth the wait. So, yeah, I mean, 
what, like you mentioned, six months, was it? Yes, yeah, six months, actually. Yeah. yeah, six months wait, not bad. I mean, probably they're not in stock or something like that, and they're just wanting to get it right. Hey, I waited uh, like uh, seven months to get one of those Pinkie Pie plushies that was being sold ages oh, ago. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, I remember those. Uh, f- four DEs. Yeah, four DEs, four DEs yeah. are awesome, and oh. Took forever, for, took forever for them to actually, you know, get the orders out, but, um, good quality stuff, yeah, so. Yeah, true. So, all good things come to people who wait. Well, unless it's Duke Nukem Forever. <gasps> ah, true that, but Duke Nukem Forever has history. <laughs> uh, A cursed history. Oh, so true. Changing hand on developers. Uh, talking about delivering, um, I'm not sure if you remember this, but way back when, uh, we reported on Integrity Toys. They're doing those kind of expensive movie license toys, like doll figures, like the Barbies and whatnot. Similar. Oh yeah, the one, the one where they're not creating, they're not creating ponies and they're not creating equestria girls. They're creating dolls about the fans of My Little Pony. <laughs> yep, and fashion. And we reported back then, like how they look and whatnot. And apparently, they're out. People who pre-order it are. Well, they're, they're getting it. They they have been shipped and if you bought yours, you'll get yours soon, I guess. So, yay. Okay, so we get one delay, but one delivery. And these were ones were like, uh, they, they were like pre-orders, but they had a limited amount of stock. 500, too, if it? I remember right. Jeez, that's really limited. 500 each. So that means you have six varieties, but 500 prints only. So, yeah. So three, that's, that's, uh, 3,000 total different figures. Mm hmm. And honestly, uh, this is, I'm not a big fan of this kind of doll, so yeah, I can't say much. Well, hey, it's interesting and unique, I'll give them that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting and unique. Uh, but still, it's something out there for the collectors and fans of the show. I don't think kids would buy this one, mostly adult male collectors. Or just adult collectors as well. I don't think it's specific to male, I think oh, yeah, pretty much any bad. adult. Right. Yeah, I think adult collectors, yeah, this is definitely more for, or just those who are really into designer dolls specifically. Like, uh, I, I know my niece would probably get a kick out of these because she loves, okay, she is, she is a girly girl. She loves anything involving fashion, uh, and whatnot. Although it's funny though, she, she likes, Bar- she actually likes Barbie more than she likes brats. She thinks brats are weird. Well, well, you did say just, that she was a girly girl, so that explains a lot. Well, I'm just going to say right there, she's got taste. <laughs> well, I want to say that Brett's... Yeah, Brett's... I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking about Monster High. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah Brett's are all just... Oh, we're all about fashion and giant puffy lips. <laughs> Barbie's been a... That's f- not a word! Astronaut, man. Yeah. Oh, great. Sweetie Bot's going to have to censor that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, t- talking about toys in the industrial market, um, what about this one, man? Like, you, you brought it up to me and it was an interesting listen. So, you, why don't you lead this one? Okay, yeah, so recently, uh, the TED Talks, for those who are unaware what the TED Talks are, they are a, um, basically a meeting of, uh, like minds of, uh, technology and social commentary of the year. And, We've had interesting guests like people who come on stage to talk about prosthetics, who have full leg prosthetics and, you know, talk about the advancements in that industry. Or they have, uh, Kermit the Frog come on stage to talk about, you know, society and how it's changed. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it was, it, the TED Talks are, you almost have to watch them, but I have to say they're, they're, uh, geeks and nerds and, um, intelligent people getting together to talk about life in general in the, in the past year and just things that are currently going on in society. And one of the guys, um, uh, Christopher Bell, that's his name, he got on stage to talk about the leading title was uh, Where Are the Female Superheroes? And the second he says that, he immediately clarifies himself saying, okay, there are plenty of female superheroes, which is true. I mean, heck, you go anywhere and uh, not just superheroes, but female characters. I mean, there are a ton out there, especially kick-ass female characters. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, my personal favorite, if I have to say, if I had to pick one uh, amazing female character, that would have to be Ripley from Alien. Ah. Or or even Rip or Ripley from Aliens, where she's like now a superhero, too. <laughs> yeah, if it were me, I would have to say Bayonetta. 
Bayonetta. Oh, awesome. yeah. And the kicker, kicker about that is Bayonetta was actually designed by a woman too, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, she, she is the female power fantasy. But, um, the, the point is, anyway, his, his thing was like, where are the female superheroes? Well, they do exist. The problem though is in society, we tend, or at least, you know, the American society, I'm not speaking for the world here, but that, that it tends to be, have an American eyes centric, uh, theme to it. But the thing is, he was saying like, okay, his daughter, he was, t- he was using his daughter as an example. She loves multiple different things. She loves playing with dolls. She loves being a karate special. She, she, the girl is in like uh, a form of martial arts, and she's three belts away at the age of nine. Wow. <laughs> yes, she's three belts away from being a black belt. This girl at age nine <laughs> is closer to being a black belt than I will ever be in probably the next ten years. It's just like... This nine-year-old could kick my butt. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, but the thing is, she loves all these different characters, and she she loves dressing up as characters, too. Like, she, she'll be like Obi-Wan from Star Wars, because she loves Star Wars. But the thing is, is that she can't find any merchandise or anything, or any outfits or anything related to the to the female characters. Like, from Guardians of the Galaxy, where's, uh, you see all this merchandise showing um, Rocket Raccoon and uh, Groot, and, you know, Star-Lord and, you know, all the other characters, but where's, where's Gamora uh, on the, on there? Mm-hmm. Or, or even, even worse still, um, how about in the Marvel universe where we have Black Widow, who has been part of five major, uh, five major movies of the entire Marvel industry? And where's her merchandise? In fact, actually there's been cases where Black Widow has been removed from her own merchandise and substituted for, like, Captain America. Like, remember that iconic, iconic scene from Winter Soldier where she uh, basically backs out of the aircraft in a in a motorcycle and lands on the highway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the toy replaces her with Captain America doing that. And it's just like, where are all the toys of these characters? Where are the... Where's the merchandise? The thing is, is that we, yeah, we'll watch this stuff in media. We, people will watch this. But then when kids want to play this stuff out and act it out, they don't have anything to do that with. And then this leads into, this leads into, well, how do ponies factor in this? He used MLP, Friendship is Magic, as an example of where uh, both men and women and girls and boys have been playing with uh, My Little Ponies and all the different uh, merchandise that it has it for. Because it has a bunch of merchandise for its characters. So it's it's good in that way. But the thing is, is that that one itself, you know, it's already geared towards it, so they're going to have merchandise of it, but what about the others? So it's like, we need to have boys and girls being able to play with both anything we consider. I mean, his ending joke to the whole thing was actually very good, was, is this toy a boy or a girl's toy? (laughs) It's like, okay, how do you figure this out? Is this toy for a boy or a girl? The only question you need to ask is, is this toy for someone's genitals? (laughs) If yes... If yes, that is not a toy for a <laughs> child. What are you doing? Oh, good on you, if, man. If, if, if no, if this is not a toy for your genitals, then it is a toy for both boys and girls. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I would highly recommend watching the whole TED Talk. And actually, watch the whole series. You know, just um, the great, great series to just uh, r- ruminate on. I highly recommend. I do see where he's coming from. And I can understand the marketer's point of view for this one, especially when it comes to toys. Because here's the thing, when you promote or when you market a toy, for example, like um, Captain America, Winter Soldier, that is toy brand or toy marketing for mostly boys because it's action-y and whatnot. And the thing is when a boy going to buy a product, the chance of them buying a girl thing is very low. Because they might say, uh, oh, ew, it's a doll. I don't want to play with that. I want to play with Captain America. It's an action figure and whatnot. It's like, there's the mentality there. And I'm guessing they've probably done a lot of market research on it. The thing with that, though, is that usually um, most kids will just play with whatever they want to play with if you don't try and push them towards it. The whole idea of that's a boy's toy or that's a girl's toy is actually more so a recent societal thing that was heavily pushed in the 1950s when genderized Clothing became very huge. Mm-hmm. In fact, actually, before before then, um, you, you know what uh, boys used to wear? Long, flowing white dresses. 
lots of uh, lots of clothing was gender neutral for kids back then. Uh, this whole this whole push has been more so a corporate thing, and it's been ingrained in well American culture. And um, the, 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 okay, whether other people are not willing to admit it, America actually does have a huge factor on a lot of pop culture oh, yeah. around the world. I totally agree. Yeah, and but um, it doesn't mean it affects it completely, but. It, it's sort of a follow the leader mentality. Yeah, and here's the thing too when it comes to toys, because here's the funny thing, because in um, I'm gonna say in Japan, uh, all those toys where you mentioned about um, is this a boy's toy, is this a girl's toy, those things don't really factor in because in Japan, if a brand is popular, let's just say One Piece, um, they're they're not gonna oh, make yeah. toys, they're, they're gonna make. Um, figures, um, like opposable figures, like for example, um, Dragon Ball. Usually, a good company would do that is SHF, and they will do kind of uh, opposable figures, how you can post them and whatnot, and they cost a huge buck. Usually, those come in, uh, well, main characters. Like if the main character is a girl, well, you're gonna have a girl figure. If it's a boy, you're gonna have a boy figure. As long as the brand sells, and knowing Japan. Mostly the girl figure will sell out more than the boys. Yeah, it just depends on uh, what what it's what what it's for. Like some people buy figures for you know. I, I was more so the the original thing uh, that for that particular article for the TED Talk mm-hmm. was talking about toys and children. Mm. Uh, figurines and uh, collectors items uh, tend to be a completely different market itself. You're trying to get towards people who are more collectors or uh, they they want a piece of whatever the show is, and by having a physical piece of it, it, it reminds them that, yeah, I really like this thing, this thing reminds me of it, and I get a sense of accomplishment by owning a piece of it. Mm, yeah, and when it comes to toys, too, like, probably this guy's thing about kids' toys, it's a very specific niche when it comes to, okay, we need to balance out the market, we need to have boy and girl toys. Like, if we are selling, let's just say, um, Avengers uh that yep. toy specifically, you gotta have Black Widow in to get the full set. Like, if you're talking about the Disney XD cartoons, you have Captain America, Hulk, Hawkeye, um, Falcon, Iron Man, and Black Widow. That's a full team. You you need to have all that for a set. Come on, you, you can't leave it out. Don't forget, you know, like Scarlet Witch or any of the others that also show oh, up. Oh yeah, if you're talking about the movies, yes, then you have Scarlet yeah. Witch, you have Vision, and then you have Quicksilver, who died, and then, oh, spoilers. <laughs> been, oh yeah. It's been a while. Uh, but. Or, or if you want to go, or, or actually, I would love a figurine, or, well, actually not a figurine, but I'd love them to make, uh, a, a, uh, an action figure or just, yeah, uh, of Negasonic Teenage Warhead from <laughs> Deadpool. Yeah. But okay, I know there's a comment that's out there that's gonna tell us, but guys, Marvel has been pushing out the Black Widow action figure out there. And it's true, yes, I have seen it before. But it's just that one because people were complaining about it. And yes, there's a few of Captain Marvel and whatnot, and they're slowly improving. I'm not saying that they're not. I, I don't know why that it, it's an antiquated form of just Thinking that it's not going to sell when there's plenty of kids I know who would love to play with any kind of dolls itself. Uh, I mean, it depends. It depends also because now toys these days are losing to video games. Oh yeah, and and that market may crash again soon at the rate it's going. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's besides the point. The point of the matter is you have to have the whole spectrum. If a girl wants to play with a Gamora action figure. You gotta have it there for her, even though it's not gonna sell that well. Or a guy wants to play with it, or if a girl wants to play with Captain America, or if you're gonna make a show, don't leave out characters of your merchandise at, because of some preconceived. Oh well, it's a girl character; it 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 won't sell as well. It's like, how do you know it's not gonna sell as well? Well, because we know they don't sell as well. Why? Well, because they're not out there. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, it doesn't sell because no one makes them. And no one makes them because they don't sell. Or it could be a target audience kind of deal where they put, or they ask kids who play with them or, and you know, one of those things where they ask kids about it. But I don't count those kids as kids. Kids are stupid. No, no. <laughs> they're selected. They're trained for these kind of things. So yeah. you're not getting the general audience. You're just getting a selected handful of people who says what you want them to say. 
market research can show you a general idea of something, but that doesn't mean it's going to be right. Mm-hmm. Shows have been canceled because market research says, oh, well, you know, according to this, you know, we're not as popular with this sort of group that we want to be targeting. Mm-hmm. And there's a story about the Green Lantern uh, 3D animated cartoon series where they test out the market audience thing and they say that they didn't really like it. And I I wonder if it was Bruce Tim. He says like, nah, we're going to run with it, don't care. And it was successful. Yeah. And the thing was is that the market researchers were going off of one kid because one kid yawned. Yeah, I remember that. It was like, one kid yawned during the thing, so he must be bored of it. It's like, or maybe he just yawned because he was sleepy and didn't get enough sleep. Or probably he's not a big fan of the Green Lantern. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, heck, I've yawned at BronyCon and I'm excited there. <laughs> yeah, but. But then again, that's just, that's just when, that's just when, you know, Saber Spark was on stage. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, burn! No, 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 no. no. Yeah, but still. I can't, I can't. <laughs> But still, the point of the matter is, this guy went up on stage and talked about where are the toys for girls. And since My Little Pony is a target, <laughs> its target audience is for girls. But have you noticed how the toys are going now? It's not specific to girls anymore, the way that they're doing it. It's more to a gender neutral kind of thing where, yeah, it's a girl's toy, but boys will buy them because it's cool. Like um, the Equestria Girl Minis. Have you seen those? I miss that. The uh, Oh, the Minis? Yeah. Hey, they're, they're cute, but, yeah. you know, again, that's not stuff for me. I bought them. I want to get the full set of the I main six because I like how they look. Uh, yeah, I, I think the look is cute, but I'm just like, eh, not the type of figurine that uh, appeals to me. Mm. Now, I did get the Guardians of Harmony Celestia, though, and I got that oh. one. And... Oh, yeah, I remember those. Those I, I want a full set of those Celestia... Nightmare Moon and Discord. I want that one. I got the Celestia one because it was the only one I could see on the shelves, <laughs> and I was just like, holy crap, the My. amount of detail in this hair. I mean, just the fact that the model itself uses her hair as part of the stand. Mm. It's just, it, I, I think it's a great representation of the character, and it just, it looks cool. Yeah. So I was like, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And, and this is, that again is something specific to collectors, but still, kids are going to latch onto it because it looks cool. Oh yeah, you make something that's eye-catching and uh, very like to, e- easy on the eyes. You know, um, plenty of kids will like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, back on to square one again because know your audience, direct that thing, and sell. Because honestly, that figure—what was it? Fifteen bucks was it? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, people are gonna buy it. Like, if it's good, it's good. Like, I bought my um, what should we call this? Uh, Equestria Gold Minis for. 10 bucks or probably less. And I like them. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not regretting buying them. That's the thing. I really, really like them. My Little Pony, think it board game. My Little Pony, the Monopoly game. My Little Pony, this or that. It exists, my friend. The, <laughs> there's also the My Little Pony Yahtzee board <laughs> game. Oh, yeah, use their uh, cutie marks <laughs> as uh, Yahtzee pieces. Uh, yep. But still, know your audience, know how to promote, and that's how you get everyone happy. Well, you can never make everyone happy. That's impossible. Uh, true. There are going to be some complainers, but the happy people are going to be out there. Guarantee you, though, you do one thing and someone will find some way to complain about it. That's the world we live in. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, and with that, that's the news for this week. Unless you got anything else to add there, Wills. Um, yes, in other news, I've moved up to full-time job work. Yay. Yay congratulations. What do you mean, congratulations? That means I work 40 hours a week now and have even less time to work on my art. <laughs> but you get monies for BronyCon. Yeah, but so? The point is I have less time for art now, and now I have more responsibility. Uh, it's just like, oh, great, more responsibility, more hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, this is what being an adult is, Will. I'm just like, yeah, well, who said being an adult had to be meh? Well, if you watch today's episode, like Big Mac says, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Uh, fun episode but yeah that's this week's episode so anyway if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters show's twitter account is at mbsshow you can catch me at Norman Sanzo I tweet about toys food and whatever tickles my fancy Will where can the people find you 
It can find me over the misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old and no, well, actually, that's probably too hard. Let's just say you can find me on DeviantArt at willison.deviantart.com where you can find me on Tumblr at, uh, what is it? Well, yeah, Tumblr slash Willison. And there I basically reblog everything to deal with artistic stuff. Uh, artistic stuff, not autistic stuff. <laughs> Well, I, I reblog My Little Pony, so basically it is autistic stuff, so whatever. <laughs> okay, um, and also uh, Film Fiction, where you can read my writings that I never update at uh, what is in, uh, Film Fiction slash what is in. And there you can read the stories I never update. Yes. Uh, it's no problem, man. I've been waiting for that one Spike and Gilda fanfic to update. It'll update soon, man! <laughs> Yeah, someday, someday my fix will update. Uh, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. And also please subscribe to our latest podcast, the MBS Show Review and Discussion, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Ever wanted to hear Silver Quill or Ment Sapphire? It's on that show. Ever want to hear Sapphire curl up in a ball and rock in a fetal position crying over how Silver Quill is tormenting her is on that show and ever wanted to hear me kind of shake my head in disappointment and trying to get things stabilized well you can hear it here and there but over there's much more funny I don't know man it's kind of a losing battle I think you should just give up yeah but it's fun to try and be the moderator or be the what you call this ref <laughs> uh, but anyway, links are going to be in the show notes, so click on them to go to links or subscribe. And also, it's over. Also, all those things are on the YouTube, so please subscribe. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. And we'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Goodbye, fellow people of the interwebs. Bye.